Joyful greetings to our viewers around the world and welcome to Vegetarian Elite. We are delighted to continue our two-part special today on Peter President and founder Ingrid Newkirk, the one who made the difference. Last week, we were introduced to the early years of Ingrid's lifelong quest for animal rights, how she became vegan, and how she helped establish People for the Ethical Treatment of Animals, or PETA, the largest organization of its kind in the world. Nowadays, the acronym PETA is synonymous with passionate animal advocacy, championed by like-minded individuals. Everybody is very important and the world is waiting to hear from each and every one of them, including you. One can make a difference and that one could be you. One Can Make a Difference is my latest book. It's all about giving back, not ever thinking, who am I, that I can't do anything, but knowing you are a powerful individual and your voice your talents, your interests can be used in so many different ways to make a positive impact on the world. I've learned that someone who enjoys music or comedy, poetry and painting can use that talent to change people's moods and minds. I've also learned that people who love justice usually love justice for all, whether women, children, or animals. So in this book, you will find people who have rescued elephants from a life of drudgery in the circus, who stop seals from being hurt on the ice, a woman who started the first dog park, and an artist who would not let a little cat die stuck in a shaft in a building. One Can Make a Difference contains contributions from His Holiness the Dalai Lama, Paul and Stella McCartney, Willie Nelson, Bridget Bardot, Wangari Mathai, Temple Grandin, Dr. Henry Heimlich, Russell Simmons, Helen Thomas, and dozens of other extraordinary individuals. You want to look back and say, I did this, I spoke up, I counted, I meant something in the world, and it's easy. Ingrid shares with us the excitement of her new book launch, One Can Make a Difference, as well as other projects that have raised the consciousness of how we view and treat our co-inhabitants. I actually wrote a book called Making Kind Choices. That's the book that has everything that you can do to help animals, whether you are planting a window box or a garden, you are moving into a new flat or apartment or house, whether you are bringing an animal into the home, if you've just had a child, if you're retiring, it helps you outline all the kind choices that you have. And if everybody made kind choices, Peter wouldn't have to exist. We've always been taught we shouldn't discriminate against anybody based on their looks. If they're from another country, for example, or another color, we shouldn't be mean to them or decide that they're put here for our use. So the same is true with animals. Just because they're furry or cuddly or they have big eyes or they look like us, that shouldn't be the only criteria. The criteria should be, do they suffer? And can we avoid hurting them? We just have to get past this cultural insensitivity we have to the other animal nations. Nobel laureate Isaac Bashiva Singer once said, as long as people will shed the blood of innocent creatures, there can be no peace, no liberty, no harmony between people. Slaughter and justice cannot dwell together. Ingrid Newkirk has echoed this sentiment. US Congressman Dennis Kucinich introduces Ingrid on one of her missions. Most of us would agree that the three most precious words in any language are peace on earth. In December 2005, Ingrid Newkirk traveled to Palestine to address the conference on nonviolent resistance. Her message was that the principles of nonviolence require us to re-examine our relationship with the animal nations. I hope her talk inspires in you a desire 
to help increase the sum total of peace on earth every single day of your life. Violence affects all walks of life, human and animal, and to allow one form of violence to exist while asking for the eradication of the other seems painfully hypocritical. Today we must ask ourselves, don't animal nations experience love? Don't animals scream if we burn them? Don't they desire freedom as we do? They have done nothing to provoke aggression, yet they're the victims of the longest running war in human history, the war on the animal nations. They are killed simply because someone is powerful enough to steal their land, run them out of their homes, take their young from them, cut them up and eat them, experiment on them, use their skins, treat them as amusements to jump and dance and be forced to fight for some human fleeting pleasure. Nonviolence can be expressed through kindness to the animal nations, the ultimate kindness being to leave them in peace and refrain from exploiting them. A nonviolence movement cannot stand silent while factory farm animals, whose meat is distributed worldwide, are forced to live their entire lives never seeing the sky or breathing fresh air. Everyone's at war with the animals, and yet they don't carry a flag, they don't have a religion. Finally, we are sometimes afraid to be like the other animals, and that is a matter of vanity. There is no human nature. It is shared nature. For all animals laugh and love and grieve and are lonely and feel pain and wish to be free. We'll be right back to Vegetarian Elite to conclude our special on Peter President and co-founder, Miss Ingrid Newkirk. Welcome back to our program on Vegetarian Elite, Peter President and co-founder Ingrid Newkirk, the one who made the difference. One of Peter's most recognisable and bold campaigns deals with the cruelty of the fur industry, as Ingrid works to raise public knowledge of how an animal becomes an article of clothing. Our investigators have gone into markets and watch these poor animals blinking up through their eyelashes, the only hair left on their body. Now, they can't help themselves. So we have to be there to say to people, please never, never buy fur, never wear fur, know where it comes from. And if you wouldn't hurt an animal, then don't buy it. Ingrid has also worked tirelessly for the protection of animals in zoos and aquariums. She suggests that citizens should speak out to their governments and insists for safe animal sanctuaries in place of the confinement of zoos. And what is the most precious thing that we value? It's being able to walk where we want to walk or go where we want to go or say no to something. All that has been stripped away from them. So here they are in a small, small space you imagine many of these animals walk for miles in nature, or birds like eagles soar uh, hundreds of feet high, and yet here they are caught in an aviary or a cage, a small enclosure, and they can't even choose their friends. Sometimes their family members are taken away from them and put into another zoo. And would the same hold true then in some of the large aquarium? To them, it's a, an area the size of a bathtub. It's as if you were swimming around, you know, in a small swimming pool for your whole life. They go in the great oceans, thousands of miles. They migrate around the continents, many of these animals. And they have lives, real lives, and they have groups, but they can't do that in captivity. And Jacques Cousteau said, 
that many of them, they have such depression that they bang their heads against the walls. So what would you say to some people who will say, well, if we don't hunt and if we don't fish, our earth will become overpopulated. All the animals were here for many, many years before human beings were, but they didn't despoil it. They control their own populations. There's a, an incredible balance in nature. It's only we who come along and upset things and take animals and put them in cages and put them in sheds and start producing them so that we can eat them that ruins the balance of nature. They don't reproduce this way naturally. They don't grow this big naturally. They don't crowd together this way naturally. We are the despoilers. We should let nature and all its wonder exist and be in awe of it, not pervert it. With climate change and draining natural resources, we have a limited time to put things right with our world. The slaughter of over 60 billion land animals a year and its consequences on our health and the degradation of the planet is the wake-up call that we must heed. How we treat every living being on Earth affects our future and that of our planetary home. Those who suspect wars are more seizures of resources often become vegetarians when they learn that it takes six to 12,000 gallons of water to produce one commercially produced pound of flesh. It takes almost 50 times as much water to raise a cow compared to raising the same amount of food from potatoes or lentils or beans. It takes nearly twice as much fossil fuel as the energy it produces to produce a meat-based diet as a vegetarian diet. There are some who reason that eating fish is suitable for a vegetarian diet. Miss Newkirk offers her views. Everybody knows that a fish suffers. All you have to do is walk down to the dock and watch or, or see a fish coming in in a net, and you see them suffocating, you see them gasping, you see their eyes bulging out of their heads. They're struggling for life. They want to live the same way that we would struggle if somebody put a th hook through our mouths or someone put us in a net and took us down into the water where we can't breathe instead of up from the water where they can't breathe. So it's, we see it, we can feel it, we can understand it. The fish are individuals like a dog, like a cow, like any other. Meet Your Meat is a video compiled by Ingrid Newkirk that documents the life of a factory farmed animal. It was distributed to every member of the United States Congress, accompanied by a letter from award-winning actor and Peter supporter Alec Baldwin. How can it be, we ask, that some animals are regarded loving companions and some are deemed as nothing more than commodities to be subjected to a life where every day is a tragedy for them? Many international celebrities lend their name and voice in support of Peter and Ingrid's dedicated work. Pamela Anderson, John Abraham, Rosalind Sanchez, Simon Cowell and Maggie Q to name but a few. We are in good company when we care for our animal friends. Please come and join us. Do anything. We love you to get involved. Go to PETA.org, that's P-E-T-A dot org. There is nothing more precious than your involvement. Without you, things won't change and they won't change fast enough. Ingrid has worked tirelessly for almost three decades to see an end to cruel treatment of our loving animal friends. It's wonderful if you look back, you can see how far we've come only because people have cared and because people have spoken up. If we want nonviolence, we must work very hard to be as nonviolent as we possibly can. It takes no more time to order the hummus sandwich or the steak sandwich. It's the same. We don't have to divert from anything else we do in our lives to incorporate nonviolence to the animal nations. And maybe there will be a day, and maybe this is a beginning, 
when we will stop saying, we are human beings, treat us like human beings, and start saying, we are living beings, treat us please like living beings. Our sincere gratitude and heaven's blessings to the incredible Miss Ingrid Newkirk for offering many people the knowledge to connect again with their compassionate hearts. Together we can create a future of peace for animals, people and our shared planetary home. Thank you for watching Vegetarian Elite. Please stay tuned for Between Master and Disciples here on Supreme Master Television.